Hello and welcome to my PowerPoint. My name is Bryony Ward and I'm here to talk to you about the exploitation of donkeys for tourists and therefore Euros within Europe. So donkeys are part of the Equidae family. They were domesticated in northeast Africa around six to seven thousand years ago. It is thought that their average lifespan is around 28 years. However, in less developed countries, this is thought to be actually only around 10 years. And McLean and Narvis Gonzalez in 2018 found that. Their height ranges from 0.8 to 1.5 metres and their weight can range from 90 to 180 kilograms, depending on the species. So donkeys in Europe. As you can see on the top left corner, we do have a map of Europe. Now, the vast majority of donkey populations in Europe are allocated in the Mediterranean basin. Now, this is said to be Portugal, Spain, France, Italy and Greece. We are going to focus mainly on Greece for today's PowerPoint. Now, donkeys are said to be highly heat and dehydration tolerant. Now, this makes them very suitable for semi arid climates. Now, if anyone has been to Europe in the summer, it is very hot, it is very dry, and donkeys are said to be perfect for working in those conditions. Now, they are still a feature of farming in rural communities. So, with the bottom right hand corner, that picture does show a classic scenario of a donkey working in a field. Now, one concern with the continued use of donkeys within Europe is as farmers are able to access EU subsidiaries, it may encourage modern techniques such as using a tractor. And that raises the question, what will happen to the surplus of donkeys? So donkeys for public use. As many of us as children may have been on a donkey ride or have been to a petting zoo and seen a donkey there. That is commonly where you will see them, especially around the UK. And but however, because they are hardy and resilient animals, you will see them as working for humans and therefore for public use. Now, that is something we're going to come on to in a little bit. Now, it is said that they are very patient beasts and they are incredibly willing. Now, Wills in 2020 said that actually, if you were unlucky enough to get a donkey that was the opposite of that and very arrogant and rude, it is actually just based on unluckiness effectively. Now, donkeys are commonly used for human transport. Now, it is said that they are often owned by the poor and that this can mean that they are overworked and that there is a low quality of husbandry. Now, Bern et al in 2010 um, was able to see that link. Now, it is said that for still in a lot of less developed countries, what is for many a car is still a donkey. So as these two pictures show where we may use a car to transport ourselves from A to B or supplies such as water um, and food, many countries and owners will still use a donkey for that. Now, many owners are said to only just have the one donkey because they will primarily use that just for transportation, but that can depend on families as well. Now, generally, if it is just one donkey being owned per owner, they are generally said to have a better um, good welfare and better ownership. However, style of ownership will dictate their spending pattern. So depending on the owner will depend on whether the donkey has access to vet care, feeding, shoeing, etc. So Greece is the main one that we're going to focus on in this PowerPoint. So owners that are involved in agro-tourism, um, mainly on the mainland of, of Greece and the islands of Greece, they will often keep several donkeys. Now, this is so that they can keep up with the, the demand of the tourists, especially in the summer season. Now, it is said that in Santorini, an island of Greece, there are over 100 equids which are used to transport the tourists from the cruises and the cruise ports up to the main town of Fira. Now, if you see in the bottom right corner, the picture there shows the steps, some of the steps going up to the town of Fira, and it just shows you the sort of conditions that take place. Now, some of the concerns from the donkey sanctuary are the health and safety of not only the donkeys, but also the humans on those steps. As you can see, they are quite steep. They're not very wide. They don't allow for much passing. Now, this was evidenced in 2014 
when unfortunately a German tourist was killed whilst they were trampled by a stampeding mule on those steps. Now, feeding and management practices, again, vary with ownership and they vary across Greece. And that can be because of differences within cultural, economical and emotional importance of these said donkeys. So whether they have an emotional connection to their animals or whether they just see them as a tool to make them money effectively. So some of the welfare issues that are um, commonly found amongst these working donkeys for um, transporting tourists. Now, many diseases are said. Now, many diseases are supposed to originate from malnutrition, parasites, infections, and bad husbandry management. So that links back to the last slide where we um, discussed that maybe in less developed countries there will be a lower um, standard of husbandry. Now, parasites represent one of the most important causes of disease in donkeys. Now, here in the UK. Um, our donkeys and ho horses are at risk of internal parasites, also ticks, um, bot flies, etc. So with the added heat, that can also then extend the problem abroad, especially in Greece, where it's very, very hot and dry. Now, unfortunately, within some of these countries, there is a lack of support services. There are a, a lack of veterinary practices, farriers and even equine dentists. So this can limit the welfare that can be um, provided to the donkeys by their owners. So lesions and sores are quite common amongst working donkeys. So um, the top picture shows a sore that has probably been um, come about by the girth. So this is used to keep the saddle on the donkey and make sure it doesn't slip around. Um, probably kept on quite tight, especially if they're carrying quite heavy people as well. Um, unfortunately, if this isn't properly, properly fitted, then it will just rub and it, it could cause some nasty ulcers. Um, the second picture shows the a saddle sore. So this is very rarely seen in the UK, but this is quite typical for working donkeys. Now, what has probably happened is they've either been carrying a very heavy person, they've maybe overworked, so they could have been wearing a saddle for maybe eight hours a day, something just an estimate. Um, if the saddle is poor fitting, then that will also cause it to rub. Now, as you can imagine, if there is already a lack of those care services, then services such as saddle fitters are going to be very, very rare. And they're another expense that probably wouldn't be paid out. So lameness and hoof deformities. Now they are quite commonly seen amongst working donkeys. If you have a little look in this photo, you can see the cruise ships um, in the sea, and that just shows you how high up these donkeys actually have to walk. As you can imagine, within the heat of a hot summer day in Greece, that is going to be bad enough. But if you then add an extra person while they're feeling you know, tired and dehydrated, that is going to add to um, that pain. As you can see on these steps, um, they may not be um, spaced apart enough for the donkey's gait, that could cause them to catch their hooves as they go down. If you can see to the left of this photo where some of the donkeys are already going down the steps, they may be catching their feet. That can cause them to get cuts and it can cause deformities within their hooves. So are there any welfare protections? So an indication of good welfare amongst a donkey is that they are alert, they're engaged, and they're showing those mutually beneficial behaviours and relationship between the donkey themselves and the handler. Now, this can be quite easy to spot, you would assume. So if a donkey has its ears flat back on its head, then that will um, indicate that they are upset. Well, they are in a negative state of mind. If a donkey is holding its head to the floor, then that is quite obvious that they are again not feeling very well and maybe they're not getting the treatment they deserve so currently within the eu the donkey sanctuary is responding to a wide range of, of needs and liaising with local vets and authorities where they can and um, they will even respond to calls in the uk for overgrown feet and that can even range then to donkeys being used at religious festivals in the week for weekends within different countries especially spain Now, amongst this, if 
there are a lack of services and there are challenges that need to be addressed, such as how can owners improve the welfare of their donkeys if they can't physically have access to vets? So that is something that needs to be considered. So media and articles. In 2018 and 2019, there was heavy media coverage regarding the use of these donkeys in FIRA. And as you can see in the picture to the left, that does show again how high up these donkeys have to travel. Now, this media, in a way, it raised awareness of the issues going on in Greece. Now, tourism has a positive in a way that it allows people from countries where there are better welfare standards, like, for example, tourists from the UK, to flag up what is unacceptable in their eyes, and then they will report back to the media. Now, a lot of media coverage was on the use, the fact that the donkeys were having to carry very heavy people that their bodies were not built for and that maybe were far too heavy for them. So potential improvements. Um, tourists are asked to make sure that they are looking for general animal welfare. So we are aware of the five welfare needs here in the UK. So making sure that they have an adequate diet, they are able to show natural behaviours, they are able to find shelter and that they are being free from any pain, injury and disease and that. So within Greece, the Donkey Sanctuary are continuing to work with the Minister of Tourism to improve the donkey's welfare on the island of Santorini. And there are projects in Greece which are challenging the use of even things like tethers and hobblers, which use a vet-led initiative to find these alternatives. Now, due to this awareness and that has been raised around the welfare issues, there are improvements that are being made currently. So in 2016, it is estimated that 70,000 leaflets were given to passengers on the cruise ships. And those passengers were asked if they could just assess whether that is something that they wanted to do. In fact, in terms of use the donkeys for their tourism. So the future for tourism and donkeys now. Broom and Carr in 2018 say that if as a tourist we are considering using an animal on our travels, we need to see ourselves as active members of a wider community. So what they mean by this is that we are all responsible for making sure that that animal has good welfare. So, for example, before tourists pass over money to be able to go on a donkey ride or use those donkeys for their um, transport up to the town of Fira, that they should check that those donkeys are being looked after properly first. Now, online petitions and those online articles that we saw previously, they have helped raise awareness for um, the welfare issues that are currently ongoing. Now, there, that awareness has been good in a way because it has now made cruise liners aware of what's going on and actually how they are partly responsible for making sure that their customers are not contributing to this poor welfare. Now, customers on these cruise, line, um, cruise lines have been given leaflets. Now, it is estimated that in 2016, there were 70,000 leaflets handed out, which raised awareness of the poor conditions, how the animals are looked after, maybe what tourists should look out for. So looking for those five welfare needs um, and in the hope that once those cruise line passengers are aware of these conditions, they can then create themselves a risk assessment for their safety, but also the donkey's safety. And in turn, that will change attitudes towards these donkeys. Now, another way that tourists can help towards the future of these donkeys is making sure they book with reputable companies, making sure that when they get to the island and they want to be transported, you know, obviously, as anybody does to their hotel or their um, place that they're staying to make sure that it is um, responsible and it is there is good welfare for both the donkey and the business owner. So thank you for listening. I've just got my reference list here. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds to have a look at that slide. It is spread over two slides as well. So thank you very much for listening to my PowerPoint.